Monsieur Hulot, traveling from the old town into the new, visiting his nephew, sister, and brother-in-law, finds himself overwhelmed by the drastic differences found in modernizing technological advancements and the pressure of the bustling career-driven life. This is Jacques Tati's brilliant Mon Oncle, a comedy of whimsical and slapstick visuals sharply directed and led by Tati himself. Filling the role of his iconic Monsieur Hulot character throughout Mon Oncle is the duality of tradition and modernization, providing a good-natured, humor-filled observation that, as impressive as technological advancements are, the advantages of convenience they provide are not necessarily always significant. Mon Oncle portrays the traditional in a very warm, romanticized manner, albeit also demonstrating its flaws. The old town is presented as a community filled with life, with few of the modern societal pressures, and yet there are parts of the old town which are crumbling as the modern high-rises are visible on the horizon, and some jobs which remain unfinished due to being easily distracted. Jacques Tati's observance of the traditional ways of being is that, while gently flawed, things will be done in their own time when they need doing, and that it's hard not to be distracted when you live in an environment so filled with vibrant life, personality-filled architecture, and a community filled with sweet-natured neighbours. Tati's portrayal of this traditionalism is a romanticization of nostalgia, it glazes over prejudices, preferring to focus on the positives of our own personal sense of nostalgia, like the flashes of Proustian memories ignited by a sweet treat, or a funny albeit juvenile joke. Tati wants to remind us of the positives we've experienced as we grew up, encouraging a fondness for your own nostalgia. This sense of romantic nostalgia is not found within the modernized world, but there is something else of equal significance which is lovingly nurtured. Within the modern and advanced world of business and technology, everything has been designed to be efficient and convenient, albeit maybe somewhat redundant. The societal pressure to make progress and developments which can benefit the average business person has probably motivated the creation of ideas and products which are a little useless. For example, the designated parking square for the business person, as if escorted by the paint on the road rather than their own ability to drive, leaving out any actual thought necessary to park the car? Or how about the sensor-powered garage door? The intention is that the car will trigger the sensor opening the door, and the person leaving the garage will trigger the sensor to shut it. And yet this technology is flawed. In some ways, the traditional and the modern are not all that different. There are inefficiencies found in both, and yet the modern way of living has created inefficiencies in its attempt to develop products to solve first world problems. The opening of a garage door, the constant need for cleanliness, to keep up appearances with the neighbours, watching television from the garden because it's too large to be practically watched from the same room it occupies. Jacques Tati's observation of the absurdities of modernity highlights that some of these problems solved by manufacturers are also problems we've created for ourselves, from peer pressure and this urge to fix that which isn't broken. However, Tati's observation is isn't entirely critical. There is certainly a love for the nostalgic, but Tati also has a curiosity for the future too, which is encapsulated in a cheeky sequence when Monsieur Hulot cluelessly fumbles and discovers the functions of almost alien kitchen technology. It's overwhelming to him, mystifying even, as it is mystifying for us as viewers. We watch in amusement and bafflement, but it's difficult not to share his curiosity. What is the purpose of this thing? Of that? What else can it do. That curiosity for new technologies found within Mon Oncle's modernist world is the same curiosity which drives people to strive for better. There's a reason why people aim to fix that which isn't broken. They want to improve the familiar, to create something better, more useful, more beneficial. There is a strong core of good intentions behind the technologically advanced. Within Mon Oncle, Jacques Tati shares this curiosity. What will our future look like? Will we still have need for manual labor? How does someone host a garden party in the future? Tati's imagination captures this speculative world that embraces its absurdity lovingly. We may smirk that Hulot's nephew prefers the more traditional, cheaper made toys given to him by his uncle over his father's more expensive looking train. It's difficult not to at times think of the things we once played with nostalgically and ponder how older toys are usually better than the new. But Jacques Tati also wishes to make us consider whether 
this balance can survive side by side. The preservation of the old, the advancements of the new, working together in a manner that brings unity. This is a thematic duality which transcends the film itself and can still be reflective of societal issues. Can we preserve human history with all its blemishes and sores, continuing to educate future generations of our flaws, alongside the advancements towards human equality and common decency? Jacques Tati's film suggests we can. In conclusion, Mon Oncle is Jacques Tati's marvellously inventive, smartly silly comedy filled with visual humour and intricately directed set pieces, which may feel like spontaneous chaos but progresses into satisfying punchlines. Tati is a master of comedy and a master of commentary, delivering a beautiful film which evaluates the duality of old and new, living together side by side, and whether this can bring unity. Tati's conclusion is reached when, during Mon Oncle's final moments, Hulot's nephew bonds with his businessman father over an old traditional prank, where somebody whistles to distract a pedestrian enough to walk into a lamppost. It's cheeky and charming, but it also encapsulates that duality beautifully. Yes, unity between the old and the new is more than possible.